Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to do addition and subtraction of fractions. And this is the second part of a new series I'm doing to help you review for the ATITs or the HESI as well because some of these problems will be on the HESI entrance exams. And um, again, I'm going to go through different math problems because you usually cannot use your calculator even though you probably learned how to do this in elementary school or high school. It's just good to refresh. So before I get started, let's cover a few principles. First of all, you have three basic types of fractions. First of all, you have what's known as a mixed fraction. This is where you have a whole number and then a fraction. So for example, two and one half, that's a mixed fraction. Next, you have what's known as an improper fraction. This is where the top number, which is the numerator, is greater than the bottom number, which is the denominator. So here we have 11 over seven. That is an improper fraction. That's all that means. Next, you have what is isn't known as a proper fraction. This is where the top number is less than the bottom number. And here I have two over three, that's a proper fraction. So that'll just kind of help you keep in mind what I'm talking about when I begin to talk about these fractions. Now I've created a very simple mnemonic to help you remember how you execute these fraction problems with addition and subtraction. And the mnemonic is MILES. And here's what MILES stands for. First of all, you ask, when you look at these problems, is there a mixed fraction in the problem? If there is, then you have to convert that to an improper fraction. So M stands for mixed fraction to I improper fraction. Next, once you have it set up as an improper fraction or a proper fraction so you can add and subtract, you have to look at the denominator and find out if there is a least common denominator and that's what the L stands for. And if the denominator, which is the bottom number, are the same, you can go ahead and add or subtract. If not, you have to find the least common denominator, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Next, you execute, which is what the E stands for. And then finally, once you get your fraction, you simplify, which is reducing that fraction to the lowest possible number so that it's in its absolute simplest form. So now I'm going to work a problem and show you how this is done. Okay, now on the ATITs exam, a lot of times the math questions will actually be written out in sentence format. So let's say it says something like this. What is the sum of 1 7th and 3 7th? Well, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to write our problem out so that we know what we're doing here. So first of all, sum means addition. So it's asking us to add 1 over 7 and 3 over 7. So we come down and we write 1 over 7 plus 3 over 7. That's how we set up our problem. Next, we remember that little mnemonic I gave you, which is miles. The M asks, is there any mixed fractions here? Remember, a mixed fraction is like 1 and 1 seventh or something like that. There are no mixed fractions here. These are just regular fractions and they're proper fractions because the top number is less than the bottom number. So we're good. We don't have to convert it to an improper fraction or anything like that. So we don't have to worry about mixed fractions converting to improper fractions. That's the first two. Next, we look at the L, which is least common denominator. These bottom numbers have to match up when you add or subtract. And if they don't, you have to find the least common denominator. Now on this particular problem, they're the same. This is an easy problem, so we're good to go. We don't have to worry about finding a least common denominator. Next is E for execute. So we can go ahead and solve this problem. Now, whenever you solve these fractions, you always keep the denominator just carried over. You don't actually add the denominator, okay? So you just carry that number over, which is seven. Always keep that in mind. But for the numerator, you actually add or subtract depending on the problem. So here we take one, add that to three, and that gives us four. Okay, so we have four over seven, but we're not done yet because the last part, the S in miles, stands for simplify. We have to ask ourselves, is there any way that this fraction can be reduced to a simpler form? So we look at it and ask, is there anything that will go into four or seven that we could reduce this fraction and simplify it? And the answer is no, because the simplest uh, number that will go into four or seven and keep it a whole number on each side is one. So one is the least common uh, factor in this number. So we keep that. The answer, our answer is four over seven for this problem. Okay, for our next problem, it asks us to compute the sum of three over six and four over 12. So we go up here to our mnemonic after we've written our problem out. And the first one, it says M for mixed fraction. And if there's a mixed fraction, we convert to improper fraction, which is what the I stands for. So do we have a mixed fraction here? No, these are just proper fractions. Okay, so we go to the next one, which is L for the least common denominator. So we look at these denominators and we notice that they are in fact different. You can't just go adding and subtracting fractions if they have different denominators. You have to 
um, multiply them out and find an equivalent denominator first and convert them and then you can actually add them. So in order to do this, we have to find the least common denominator. And so what I like to do is start with the larger of the two numbers and see, first of all, if this other number will multiply into that number. And if it will, then fine, we have our least common denominator. And if not, we'll take that lower number or our larger number here and we'll begin to multiply by two, by three, by four, until we find a number that this number will actually multiply into. So 12 and six, will six go into 12? Yes, so we have a very simple case of finding the least common denominator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset up our problem here and 12 is gonna be the new least common denominator cause six will go into 12 two times. So we'll just go ahead and copy the 12 here because that's gonna be our new denominator. Six will go into 12 how many times? Two, so we write a two there to help us remember and what we do to the bottom to convert here, we do to the top. So three times two will give us six, and we put that here for our new equivalent. Next, you come to this problem. Well, tw 12 will go into 12 how many times? Once. What you do to the bottom, you do for the top. So four times one is four, and here is our new problem now. Um, and this has the same denominator, so we're ready to go. Next, we go to E, which is execute. So we go ahead and solve. Remember that when you're solving these fractions with addition and subtraction, you don't actually add the denominator, you just carry it over. So we go ahead and put our 12 here, because that's gonna stay the same, but then we actually add our numerators here. So six plus four equals 10. Now the last part of our mnemonic is S for simplify. We always wanna simplify our answer. So can 10, or, 10 over 12 be simplified by a common factor? The answer is yes. So what is the common factor? Well, it's two because 10 and 12 can both be divided by two. So we go ahead and say 10 divided by two and 12 divided by two, and that's gonna give us five over six. Now, is there a common factor that we could use to reduce this fraction anymore? No, that's as low as you can go. The, the common factor here is one for both of those. So there we go, our answer to this problem. Okay, now let's take a look at a subtraction problem. And in this problem, it asks us to compute the difference of seven over three minus five over two. And I already have the problem set up. We have seven over three minus five over two here. So let's go and take a look at our little mnemonic. The M stands for mixed fractions. Are there any mixed fractions? No, there are no mixed fractions. Next, because if there were mixed fractions, we'd have to convert them to improper fractions, but we don't have to do that. These are both actually improper fractions because the numerator is greater than the denominator, but that doesn't matter. We can go ahead and move forward. Next, does it have a least common denominator? That's the L part. And you'll find that they have different denominators and we gotta fix that because you can't just go adding and subtracting fractions unless the denominators match. So in order to do that, we'll find the least common denominator. So we'll start with this big number. Will two go into three? No. So let's begin to multiply three by two, by three, by four, by five, until we find a number that both three and two will multiply into and have a whole number. So we'll, we'll do three times two is six. Will two go into six? Yes, it'll go in three times and give us a whole number. So that's gonna be our least common denominator. So we'll go ahead and draw a six here because that's what our new uh, denominator is going to be and this is a subtraction problem so we'll, we'll remember to put a minus sign okay so we start here three will go into six how many times two so we come and write the two there and that's how we got the six so what we do to the bottom we got to do to the top so we do seven times two here that's going to give us 14. next we do this part of the fraction two will go into six how many times three so we do, do the three there and what we do to the bottom what we got to do to the top so we do the three up here, five times three is 15. Okay, our denominators match, we're ready to go. We go to the E, which is execute. So we're gonna go ahead and execute this problem. Now, this side is less than this side and it's actually a subtraction problem. So how are we gonna work this out? Well, we go ahead and remember, we always go ahead and put our denominator over, we carry it over, we don't actually subtract this part, but we go up here to our numerators and so we subtract that out. Now, an easier way to do this, because it's gonna give us a negative number. When you have 14 take away 15, that's gonna be a negative number. So the easiest way is just to go ahead and make your minus sign because it's gonna be a negative and just swap them. So it would be 15 minus 14, which is one, or you can do 14 minus 15 in your head, which is negative one, either way you wanna do it. But the answer is gonna be negative one sixth. And next, finally, our last part, which is simplify. Can that be simplified anymore? No, negative one sixth is the answer there. Okay, now let's take a look at another problem. And this one asks us to compute the sum of two and one third plus seven over three. 
Okay, so we go to our, we have a problem written out, we go to our little mnemonic, and first of all, mixed fractions. Are there any mixed fractions in this? Yes, this is a mixed fraction, two and one third. So what we gotta do is mixed fraction converts into an improper fraction. This one right here actually is an improper fraction. That's fine, we'll leave that how, as it is, but we gotta convert this one. So how you convert a mixed fraction to an improper fraction is really simple. First of all, we'll just redraw our problem over here. And first of all, you just take that same denominator and just go ahead and copy it over. So we'll put a three on the bottom. And then to find out what our numerator is gonna be, it's easy. You just take the denominator, multiply by the whole number, and then just add that top number. So three times two is six. Six plus one is seven. So it's gonna be seven over three plus seven over three. We'll add that one. Now we go to the next part of our mnemonic here and L for least common denominator. Are the denominators the same? Yes, that's really important in adding and subtracting fractions. So we can move forward to the next part, which is E, execute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add these together. Remember that the denominator just gets carried over. And then we go ahead and add the numerator. Seven plus seven is gonna be 14. Okay, so that's what we have. Now we wanna go ahead and simplify the last part here. How do we simplify this improper fraction? Because 14 over three is an improper fraction and we want to go ahead and simplify that. Well, it's really easy because basically we're gonna convert it back to a mixed number. How do you do that? You divide 14 by three. And what we're gonna do is basically this is how it's gonna work. You're going to have a whole number and then you're going to have the fraction and this denominator is just gonna go ahead and carry down. So let's go ahead and put our three and then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide 14 by three. Okay, three will go into 14, how many times? Four, okay, so three times four is gonna be 12, okay, and it stops there, and 14 minus 12 is gonna give us a remainder of two, that's gonna be our remainder, so it's gonna be four with a remainder of two. We go ahead and put our four there as our whole number, and then two at the top. So the answer here is four and two thirds or you could say 14 over three. That's the, that's the equivalent there. So that's how you solve that one. Okay, our next problem asks us to compute the difference of two and one over 10 minus three and seven over 15. So I already have it set up here and we're gonna go and we're gonna take a look at our mnemonic. Okay, and the first letter is M for mixed fractions. Are there any mixed fractions here? Yes, both of these fractions are mixed fractions. So what do we have to do when it's a mixed fraction? We go to the next one, which is I, and we have to convert them to an improper fraction. Now, how do we do that? Let's go ahead and draw a line here. And how you convert the mixed fractions to an improper fraction is you multiply the denominator times the whole number, and then you add the numerator. So again, let's just go ahead and carry over the denominator because you always carry that over. 10 times two is 20, and then add the one at the top, that's 21. So our first number is 21 minus, let's go ahead and make our next one. Again, let's carry that denominator over, it's gonna be 15. And then let's convert this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So 15 times three is going to give us 45. And then you add seven to that and that's gonna give us 52. Okay. Now we're done with that because we have two improper fractions and we can go ahead and move to the next step. L is the next step, least common denominator. Do they have the same denominator? No, they don't. So we're gonna have to find the least common denominator. And how we do that, let's start with the larger of the two denominator numbers, which is 15. Will 10 go into 15 and give us a whole number? No, it will not. So let's begin multiplying out 15 until we can find a number that 10 will go into. So 15 times two is 30. Will 10 go into 30 and give us a whole number? Yes. So. Um, our least common denominator here is going to be 30. So let's go ahead and write that out. And let's make these fractions equivalent. 10 will go into 30 how many times? Three. So we draw a little three there. What you do to the bottom, you gotta do to the top. So you multiply 21 by three, that's gonna give us 63. Okay. Next one, 15 will go into 30 how many times? Two. And we put the two up there, 52 times two is gonna give us 104. Okay, now the denominators match and we can go ahead and we can move to the next letter, which is the E in the miles uh, mnemonic, which stands for execute. So let's execute this thing. So we go ahead and we'll just move this down here. Remember, you just go ahead and you uh, move your denominator down. You don't actually subtract the bottom part, but we go to the top part, 
with our numerators, we have 63 minus 104. Well, that's going to give us a negative number. Okay, so we'll go ahead and draw a negative sign here because you can't take 104 from 63 without having a negative number. So 63 minus 104, you can just kind of flip it around if you want. If you have to work it out by hand, you can. The answer is going to be 41. Let's say you had to work it out by hand. We just set it up real quick. 104 minus 63, we already know it's going to be negative. Um, 4 minus 3 is 1. We can't take it from 0. we got to borrow from the neighbor. It's going to make that 0, and it's going to make this a 10. 10 minus 6 is 4, so we know that's going to be 41. Okay, so now this is what we have. We go to the last part of this, which is the S, simplify. How can we simplify this fraction? Well, this is an improper fraction. The top is larger than the bottom, so if we want to simplify and make it look a little cleaner, we can turn it back into one of these mixed fractions. Remember, you can always convert a mixed fraction to an improper or an improper to a mix. So how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, it's going to be negative. So we'll go ahead and put our negative sign out here. And we always know the denominator is going to be the same. So let's go ahead and carry over our denominator and put a little fraction sign. It's going to be 30. Okay, so in order to find this, we're going to divide 41 by 30. So let's just make our little division problem here and put the 30 there. Okay, so... 30 will go into 41 one time. That'll give us a 30. Okay, so that's our number, and we're going to have a remainder here. So we'll put 1 with a remainder of 41 minus 30 is 11. So we have 1 and a remainder of 11. We put the 1 as our whole number, and then the 11 as our numerator. So the answer to this problem is negative 1 with 11 over 30. That's the answer. Or you could just leave it in this format as an improper fraction, which is negative 41 over 30. So that's how you solve that one. Okay, now I'll do just a couple more problems just so that you know that you have this down. First of all, I'll do a whole number plus a, a mixed fraction. So how are we going to solve this one? Well, whenever you're adding, it's really simple. So I wouldn't recommend really worrying about this mnemonic because addition with a whole number plus a fraction is easy. You just add the whole numbers and carry the fraction part over. So 2 plus 3, or I'm sorry, 2 plus 1 is 3. And then just carry the fraction part over, which is 5 eighths. So 2 plus 1 and 5 eighths equals 3 and 5 eighths. Very simple. Now, I'll do this one by hand because this is a subtraction problem and this is a little bit more complicated. So I'll work it through the long way by hand just to show you how it works. But 4 minus 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, so we'll revert to our mnemonic here. The M stands for mixed fraction. Is there a mixed fraction? Yes, we have a mixed fraction and then we have just a single whole number. So how are we going to do this? Well, first off, let's, let's convert it all to fraction, to a basic fraction form. To do this, for the 4, to convert a whole number to a fraction format, you just put it over 1. So for 4, we would just put 4 over 1, and that's going to give us an improper fraction, but that's okay. Minus, how are we going to do this again? We convert the mixed fraction to an improper fraction by carrying over the denominator. So we'll put the 3 there. Then you multiply the denominator by the whole number. 3 times 2 is 6. And then you add 6 to the numerator, which is 2. We get 8. So there we go. Now we have 4 over 1 minus 8 over 3. we got to go to our next step, which is to find the least common denominator because they don't match up. And 3 here is going to be the least common denominator. 1 will go into 3, so that's easy. So we go ahead and copy our problem again. Okay, 1 will go into 3 three times. And we multiply the 4 by 3 as well. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So 4 times 3 is going to be 12. And then 3 will go into 3, 1. So you multiply 8 times 1. That's going to be 8. So we have 12 over 3 minus 8 over 3. And this is very simple to solve at this point. 12 minus 8 is 4 over 3. That is our answer. Now that is an improper fraction. So if we want to simplify that, we go ahead and we convert the improper fraction back to a mixed fraction. And to do that, again, we'll just go ahead and write out our denominator. We just carry that over it. We know it's going to be a 3. And then we just divide 4 by 3. So we can just set up a basic division problem here. 3 will go into 4 one time. We put the 3 there. 4 minus 3 is going to give us a remainder of 1. So it's 1 with a remainder of 1. We put our whole number 1 here, which is this, and then we put the remainder on top. So 1 and 1 third is our answer. So that's how you solve that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll have a free quiz, which should be popping up here if you want to go on our website and test your knowledge on adding and subtracting fractions. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe.